Welcome to the 12D model drainage training. Before we begin the training, we're going to take a look at the icons on our desktop. The first icon is the 12D model icon for starting the program. The next two icons you see below are for the training notes. The 12D introduction notes are the ones that we're going to begin with, and then we've got our stormwater part two. First of all, we'll open up our notes to see what's inside. You will have to have Adobe Reader installed on your computer to read these notes. We will follow these notes fairly closely as we move through. You'll find introductory page down to our table of contents and then we're straight on to a description of what's into our training program. Finally, a brief note about how to use our training notes here. What you're going to find is that each one of the steps is clearly outlined. For example, the next thing we're going to go through is opening up the 12D model. There will be a number one written to the right of the folder icon, a number two written beside to the right of where we're going to type some information in, and then our number three step showing us the button that we're going to press. Down below in yellow inside the notes, you'll also see those steps one, two, three with the description written below. So now we're going to minimize that and go execute those commands. We're going to double click on the 12D model icon and our opening splash screen will appear. The first thing we're going to do is to change that folder. Our working folder is going to be changed by left clicking on the folder icon, moving to version 8, selecting the courses folder, not the training folder, and then moving into the drainage folder. Opening up our working folder, the first thing that we are shown is a list of the projects that are contained in this working folder, which is empty, and we're going to create our first 12D project. We're going to call this Stormwater Part 1, and then select Proceed. The splash screen is removed from the screen, the 12D program starts up, and we're originally presented with our setup project details. These project details are for your reference. You can include such things as your project number, your, who the designer was, customer names, down to other such things as the datum for the project. You must select the set button before finish in order to store the data. The same data can be included on your drawing blocks, drawing title blocks later if desired. Now to get ready for our work, we're going to maximize our plan view so that we have a larger working area and move our recalc button down into the right because this recalc panel won't be needed till later. Our next step is to import some survey data. This survey data has been collected in the 12D ASCII format so we'll go to File I.O. Data Input 12D ASCII. The 12D ASCII format is intended to transfer information between programs and other 12D users. So this survey data, if we click on the folder icon, it's called existing survey, and we can simply move down here and select the read button on our panel. Now only press, press the read button once. If you press the read button more than once, you'll read in multiple copies of the data. The reason you do not see the data immediately on the screen is we have to move up to the plus button on our plan view number one and select that model called existing survey and now we can see that survey on the screen. We're now looking at the survey data in plan view and you'll notice just below the cursor we have the X and Y coordinates of the tip of the cursor. If I wanted to see the Z values at this moment I could go up and go to our toggle button. Every view has a toggle button and selecting the toggle we can come down and toggle on our Z values. To zoom in a little bit closer, I'm going to use the roller ball on my mouse, rolling it forward to zoom in, and you can see the elevations for each one of the spot shots taken by our surveyors. Zooming out and moving my mouse down to this corner where the zooming will occur, you can see that also have surveyed two contours, a 19 meter contour and a 21 meter contour. To view the tin that we've just created, we're going to move once again to the Add button and add on the TIN existing model. You'll notice that we can see the TIN, TIN standing for Triangular Irregular Network, 
and there has been one triangle drawn between each one of the points. You'll also notice that when the remove bubbles is used, that we never get three points from the same break line. This stops a small elevation 21 bubble from occurring. Now in the center, you can see where we have elevation 19 around the entire contour and no points in the middle. The program has no choice but to create a bubble or in the center. But mind you, in this case, it is all elevation 19, so the contour bubble is not a problem. If we'd like to see our contours, we move up to the toggle button once again and go down and use our tin contours. The default contour interval is one meter. If we'd like to investigate this, we can move up to tins, down to inquire, and then down to height. We'll select the tin we'd like to inquire on, being our existing. Take this panel and sort of park it down out of the, in the corner. And now we can point to anywhere on our view and get the X, Y, and Z locations of the tip of our cursor. So you can now see that this contour is the 21 contour. Moving down to here, you can see this is the elevation 20. Next, we're going to add on the flow arrows for our tin. Moving up to the toggle button once again, down to tin flow, we get arrows pointing in the downhill direction at the center of each one of our triangles. After this, we're going to change the settings for both the tin contours and the flow arrows. Every one of our views has a menu view button. By selecting on that, you can customize each and every view inside 12D. Now what we're planning on doing is changing some settings for these views, and the settings we're planning on changing apply to the tins. Now you'll notice that as I walk down through these tin, this menu, that I'm not clicking on the items, I'm simply walking right. If you click on one of these, it will take you to a shortcut specific menu. If you walk right, it will display the submenu. Now I plan on using several items on this submenu, so we're going to use the pinup function of 12D, where you can click on the top of the menu and then drag it to a new location and it will remain in place. I'm doing this because I'm going to be using the contours followed by the flow arrows. So first of all, contours, I'd like to change the contour interval. Currently, it's sitting at one meter, as we saw the distance between these two contours. We're going to take that down to a much finer level to make it point one of a contour. And we're going to make that bold interval one meter. Selecting the set button, you'll notice that the contours are immediately upgraded, and I can select the finish to remove that from the screen. Now, if I was going to be doing drainage in this existing area, these long flow arrows would be fine. But shortly, we're going to move on to our design road area, where we'll need much smaller flow areas. So we'll do these now. We'll go to flow arrows, and we're going to change the length of these from 10 meters to 2 meters. And I'm also going to change the color of those from dark green into a bright yellow. Selecting the set button again, and then finish you'll see that the flow arrows are now much shorter. Too small for an existing tin, but perfect for the design tin. So far, all the work we've done is on our plan view, view number one. If we'd like to create a new 3D perspective view to view our tin, we're going to move up to the view menu, move down to new, and across to perspective OpenGL. The OpenGL is better than the straight perspective view, especially if you're going to be working with fly-throughs or drive along the roads. We're going to go across now and add on our tin existing. We don't see it immediately. We have to go and use our fit button, and then you can see our triangulated grid. If you'd, Once again, if you'd like to see the contours for this, we could go toggle on our tin contours, and you can see our contours, or in a perspective view, it's more often that you'll toggle on your tin shading. And now you can see a little bit of the relief down here, down into the corner where we have our basin. If you'd like to maneuver this tin around to take a better look at it, the easiest way to do that is to use the orbit button. Selecting the orbit, we'll move that to the side, allows you to use the controls to rotate your area or move it up and down. 
If you put your cursor at a spot, you are also welcome to use your wheel, rolling it forward to zoom in, and rolling it back to zoom out. So if we were going to zoom in closer to the detention basin area, by rolling on my mouse, I'd be able to zoom in to this area of our project. To switch between views, to get back to our view number one, we can move down here and select that, and now we're back to our plan view. You can leave the orbit up, but at this point we're finished with it, so I'll hit the X to close it. If you're using the practice version of 12D, you may soon run out of points inside your training version. In order to redu reduce this, we're going to go up to models, go down to delete, and we're going to delete the model that contains our survey data. Once we delete this existing survey data, delete, yes we do, yes we really do, that data is removed from the screen, however, our tin still exists and we can still use that tin. The next step is to create our road design strings and then our road design tin. This involves two steps, first of all reading in the templates and then applying those templates to our road center lines. So we'll move up to file I.O. We'll come down to templates input and we're going to browse for these inside our library and read in the standard road templates. Select read for that and then finish. We're now going to read in our road design center lines, file I.O., data input, 12D ASCII. They're found in a file called road design and select read. Finish for that. Go across to the plus button and add on our road center lines. Now these center lines have already been graded. Uh, this is the drainage course, not the road design course. So we're just going to use these pre-created center lines. Now to create our strings and tin from this, we're going to up to design, come down to roads and select create, create roads manager. Now the Create Roads Manager has comes out filled out with predefined values because in our working folder we have our defaults already set. Now we're going to create a function called Roads and if we move across to our outputs the one model that we do have to fill in is our Roads Polygons and then we can come down and select Create. It's gone and created our road strings for us, and it's also gone and created our road design tin as well. Select finish. We now can come up and add on our tin design. And you can see that this tin's been created for us, and it's already been nulled back to the edge of our road design strings. If you want to see those strings that we've all created as well, they've all been put into models that have been prefixed with the word road. So if I was to add all those on, you'd see that we have our road design strings. Now it's quite a bit cluttered by the Z values, so I'm going to toggle those Z values back off. And now you can see that we have our road design tin and our existing tin. To see the new tin that we've created in our perspective view, we're going to switch over to the 3D perspective view and turn off the tin existing. We're now going to add on our tin design and if we'd like to see it a little clearer we can come in and do a fit and you can see the entire road design that we've created. Now to take a closer look once again we'll use our orbit command move that across and we can drag that up and down a little bit and then might swing that around and then we're going to use our roller ball to zoom in a little bit closer. So what you can see here, we have our major carriageway shown here in our yellow. We've got our drainage ditches at the edge, our curb and gutter shown in blue. We've got our footpath shown in magenta. And then the red is the batter back to the existing tin. The next step is optional. And what we're going to do is create a super tin. The reason we're going to create a super tin is in case our drainage network moves outside our design tin and into the area defined by our existing tin, we still want to measure the cover for our pipes in this area. So to create that tin, we're going to move up to tins, down to create, and select super tin. Super tin has to have a name, so we're going to call it combined. 
hitting, hitting the enter key will validate the field and automatically fill in the model for the tin. We're going to change the color of our super tin. We're going to change that to a yellow. The only time we will see this color is when we take a profile of that super tin. Now the most important part of creating a super tin is entering the tins in the correct order. So we're going to have our existing tin first and our design tin second. Now as a memory tool to remember this, I think of this as floors of a building. And if you're looking down from the sky, whatever floor you see first is the one that's used. So for example, in this case, anything that is on the design tin, you will see that first. And where the design tin does not exist, we will see the existing tin. So we'll select create for that. It happens almost instantaneously because it's just gluing the two tins together. To view this tin, we're going to return back to our plan view. We're going to remove off all of our other models. So I'm going to select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one, and then select. And then I'm going up to the plus button, coming down to tin combined, and bring that onto our view. You'll notice that the way the tin is drawn is at first it draws the existing tin, then it's blacked out in the zone of the design tin, and then the design tin is drawn. Now one of the disadvantages of a super tin is that you do not display the tin flow. So if I toggled up here and went to tin flow, it's turned on, but we can't see anything. To work around this shortcoming, you're more than welcome to come across and add on your tin design so that it's shown on top of your super tin, and then your tin design does have our flow arrows. One of the benefits of creating a super tin is that it's automatically updated when you update one of its sub tins, whether it's the existing or the design. To demonstrate this, we're going to change the color of the existing tin. So the first thing I'm going to do is going up to toggle and toggling on our tin solid. Here you can see the color of the existing tin is green. So we'll move up here to tins, down to color, and change the color of a tin. Now it's not the super tin we're going to change the color of, but we're going to change the color of the existing. And we're going to change it from the green color to a dark green color. And then select color. Now that has updated this. We do need to update our view, so we're going to come up here and repaint the view. And you can see that now the existing tin has been changed to dark green. And of course, we're looking at the tin combined, so our super tin has been automatically updated.